but I spun out on the straight or going into a corner. Anyway, I come to like a dead stop and Charles T-boned me at full speed. And like I, it was not a like a workman's was a comp bruised claim. Or I was, was bruised, I was bruised from the bottom of my ankle all the way, all the way stop. up to like my floating rib, like where, where the car just, yeah, he couldn't stop from, you know, laughing. Or he while didn't want to stop. hit me at full speed, so. I mean, you know, maybe he just saw you there and just sort of took it was aim. water, it was raining in my eyes, I couldn't stop, you so, know, Noah was there. It was Welcome back to Making Speed, No Alexander Charles Cruz, and today on the podcast we have Keith Freeber with Margay. Now Margay's been building go-karts for how long? Ever. 51 years. 51. Ever. Since wheels were round. Yeah, since, yes. <laughs> since wheels were round, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and this is a business that uh, was... But it was a different company originally. Was it like a steel, like a manufacturing company or something? Started out as well, it was my, my grandfather. Okay, and it uh, started out as a manufacturing company. Yeah, uh, for wagons. For wagons, <laughs> <laughs> and then it got a little more advanced. Right. Uh, no, uh, my grandfather started a tool and die company, a metal stamping company, in the basement of his home on Marquette Avenue in South St. Louis. Nice. Know where it, it is. Grew oh. from there. Wow. And uh, in 1964, we started making components for racing go karts. Uh, my grandfather owned a, a Curtis Craft Midget, a USAC. Yeah. I know what those are. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, those yeah. were, had an Offenhauser engine, right. like yeah. all the really cool stuff. He had all the big names back in the day that drove for him. So he was a real racing fanatic. My dad came along, and, and my grandfather wanted to get him in the picture. So he started making parts for racing carts in 64, and we started building chassis in 1968, and we've We've never been smart enough to stop, so we're still doing it, man. It's hard to stop when you love something <laughs> dearly. Is. You yeah. know, you know, it's hard. Sometimes we're like, should we? Are we doing the? What are we? Well, and then you know you're what? Constantly you, trying to progress too. Yeah. So it's like you're like, oh well. Last and you're trying year, to make a little work. money. Yeah. Trying to, right. oh yeah, yeah. money, pay yeah. some bills. That's always yeah. on the back burner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's that. <laughs> They were like entertainment versus awesome stuff. And then on the other yeah. hand, we have like profitability and making money. So, yeah. but I, I feel like if it's a passion business you might put, yeah. you might put the, the good stuff first, but yeah. either, either way. I, don't know. I mean, for both of us, I think this is a passion business. You Absolutely. love what you're doing. I love what I'm doing. And I think it shows in the, in the finished products yeah. that you come up with. There's a lot of other ways to make money. We've established <laughs> that, but at the end of the day, could like you give me a list? Maybe that we would can, be yeah. we can, I we have can. a list just yeah. in case. H B C HVAC yeah. companies I've heard are like yeah. the quickest good. way to become a millionaire. Really? They, yeah, they yeah. do well. Yeah. But, you know, you got to fix furnace problems all day long. Yeah, then you've got a real job. So, yeah. again, yeah, circling back, we're fortunate to do something we love. It's fun. And right. uh, God forbid we ever have to get real jobs. Exactly. It's one of my biggest fears, actually. There's like the real <laughs> job fear. And it's legitimate because I feel like anybody that ha owns a business um, – has that fear in the back of their head, like, what if this all goes to shit? And I have to like, like, what do I, am I presentable in the workforce? Like, what, what do I look what would like? Look Who like? would hire yeah. me? Right. Like, I do yes. like a really specific thing that like has worked out okay, but yeah, yeah what, what, what does that look like for, for, for Noah? So yeah, that's the legitimate fear. And I think people at like every level have that, have that fear because I, I read like, you know, I, I like to hear stories about entrepreneurs and other people. And I know like even like Jerry Jones and the Cowboys, that guy is like very wealthy and, you know, does pretty well with that. And that's like one of his fears that he's going to have like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because right. that seems like a legit concern. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Sure. <laughs> it could all go away. It could all, it could all go away. You never yeah. know. So. Um, luckily, we've got a pretty stable economy at the moment. Hopefully, it stays that good. way. Yeah, and people like their toys. People want to get out and play uh, yeah. at different levels. You know, obviously, uh, with what you do and with what we do, we're sort of at two different price points. Sure. But um, people have their hobbies, you know, and, and, and people work harder than ever uh, these days, and they don't have time. That's the, that's the one thing you can't buy more of, right, is time. No. And, and like, I'm a car guy, and I would, I've got a 71 Mustang convertible. Right. That I, redid like you know geez a long time ago now 30 years ago and, and i would love to get that out and just kind of work on it and get it back to where i want it again when, when are you going to do that i don't when have time. He retires when yeah. you get it, when i don't, don't have time 70 so Speaking i'm going to bring it over here at some point there right you go. i've seen you guys do pretty good work it's pretty we nice try to figure it out we, we yeah. try, you might yeah. eventually get we, there yeah um, you know, it seems like you're there and sometimes it doesn't seem like you're <laughs> No, we do. Earl we do. Shibe calls us for recommendations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we do great work and, like, you know, we've got a team of awesome, awesome uh, people that I'm sure kind of you do the same thing. Yeah. Like you got your go-to guys that you know can make it happen. And, yeah, so, so. Uh, but, but, but there's no time. So, there's no time. So people go to you right. and say, hey, here's what I have in mind. Can you make this happen? And, and you're like, you're a magician. You can make all that happen. I'll sell you our time. We're just selling right. time. And, and we sort of do the same thing. You know, uh, some of the products that we have now and some of the programs that we offer now. Right. 
are because people don't have time to sort of work on their hobbies that they used to. So we offer all these arrive and drive programs. I was yeah, going to I I was gonna bring awesome. that up. I mean, that makes total sense with today, like how fast paced everything is. Exactly. I mean, I think there's probably got to be a pretty big waiting line for that, right? <laughs> I wish there was a line. I mean, we, yeah. we have full field. So at Indianapolis last year, first of all, we raced at Indianapolis Motor Speedway last that's year. That's, I mean, incredible. that's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. just to uh, recap here briefly, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, mm -hmm. Daytona International Speedway, right. and COTA, Circuit of the Americas. All three of those tracks we hit with our Ignite program last year. Which wow. is, so do you race on the full big? Like, what's the, where do you race? Each of those tracks has a karting facility right. or a specific cart track that they set up so at indianapolis we were in the infield racing okay. on part of the old formula one road course wow. that works yeah. so that was pretty yeah. cool inside oh, yeah. of turn four like you know onto the main straightaway there sure. uh daytona they have a specific track in in the infield inside nascar four and coda they have a really nice cart track right outside bet, the road course they there have a nice track there so yeah everything down there's it. nice i don't I, so big, what are, what are the requirements thing, yeah. to come out and do that write a check have right. Check. <laughs> Sign the waiver. Get right. your ass there. Actually, maybe in the other order. Sign the yeah. waiver, then write the check. Yeah. No, um, you have to have a little bit of prior experience, but we take care of everything. Sure. I mean, you literally fly in, race, and, and then fly out. So we supply the equipment. We supply the mechanics. All of the carts are prepared equally or as equally as possible. And last year at Indianapolis, we had 64 drivers That's in crazy. one class yeah. taking the green flag. It was so cool. So how much of a support staff do you need to, to run that many... <laughs> A lot. A lot. Yeah. Uh, so we have some really great people. We've been around a long time. So yeah. we know a lot of really good mechanics. We right. know all of the people in the industry. So I feel like we can pull a lot of the best people together. Sure. And we have this awesome support team. And I think we probably had at Indy, I think we had 23 people working for us. So you can uh, flex out to, for these events. You can go from we scale. your- scale. You can, you can make it work. All exactly. Right. We scale. So we had a, we had a uh, massive tent over there. I forget how many square feet. It was like, I don't know. It's almost 20,000 square feet or something like right. that. We had over 60 drivers under that one tent, plus you know all of their support staff. And so right. we're feeding all of those people. We're taking Man. care of the equipment. Wow. Um, and we've got a great team at Margay, uh, Greg Dingus and Sean Kennedy. Those guys really keep the program organized and keep things rolling. Otherwise, it could, the wheels could literally fall off in a big hurry. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, I don't know. What a great thing because I, I, people are so – the way people spend money is interesting. That, that I, I'm a, a hobby person, so – I'll hop on something and I'll get all the stuff and then run out of time in some way, as we talked about, and then it'll kind of all fall apart. But what a great, great way to do something. I mean, well, people are thrill seekers anyway, yeah. or, you know, they're, they're into like buying an experience. Yeah, I think. right. So exactly. I it, mean, it makes total sense. You know, there, if you really look at it, even at the higher end, there's people doing the same thing at Indy and, right. and in NASCAR. Yeah. Sure. I mean, there's, Hey, you and I could go run the Indy 500 next year if we just show up with enough money. Sure. It's kind of frightening well, to we, think about it is, that. It is we frightening. Ran into, <laughs> we ran into Ivan Stewart. Um, oh, yeah. In, right on. In Saudi Arabia. Holy Spent God. some time talking to him, and he was telling us, like, you can do an arrive and drive at the ba at, in a yeah. Baja race now. That's something you know, that's is, on my list for this year, yeah. actually. Really? Are you going to go do it? Wide Open Baja. Yeah, w that's w it. He told us. Yeah, Wide Open yeah. Baja. He said, do this. Yeah. yeah. He did. He told us to he said, get before you be together and go do it. Before you become me, <laughs> you can go. You can go check this out, and you can go. You can go. But he did say like his ending statement to that was he's like, and I'm not worried because you're not going to beat my records. <laughs> no, I, I think he, <laughs> his, think his records yeah. are safe. Yeah, he's I confident, so. especially if we're in the mix. Right. We can't even beat some kid's record on right. the old driving. Did you play that video game? I haven't played that. Oh, you, the, oh yeah, you right, remember the, the Ivan Stewart? Yeah, 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 yeah. Three steering wheels. It was like I remember the colors. Like, you know, it's like <laughs> yellow red and blue going around and yeah you could drive the indoor stadium truck it's like a teeny little truck that goes around um i don't I'm know there well we've, we've got three drivers for the team right hey. here right i've driven those cars before by really? the way i went and i did the uh, i didn't do the race but i did like a four-day trip with them it's the real deal oh yeah it's the real deal man it's pretty cool and it's it's uh it's the baja 1000 it's right up there with indy like, oh yeah i'm never gonna go race the indy 500 thankfully for a lot of people and a lot of reasons <laughs> You might be better qualified than some other people that have done it. Yeah, possibly. That right. is a good point. Based but, on our previous conversation <laughs> a, a minute ago about anybody being able to show up and race that. So, but that's the great thing about Baja, right? Is that you can show up, and it is something that's sort of achievable and it's uh, yeah, out it there, you know. So, so that's on the list. But that's we do the same thing. We offer that same type of experience. You want to go race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway or Daytona, or this year we're going to race at Miami Homestead. Um, in addition to a lot of traditional karting venues that right. are super cool, um, you can literally just show up, 
we have everything there for you. We've got a pit stall for you. We have all of your equipment. Show up, race, have a big time, go home. Can we talk about cost at all? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's okay. pretty reasonable. Okay. Um, especially if we're comparing it to the Indy 500. We look really good. <laughs> or Formula One. <laughs> exactly. Or Formula yeah. One. Yeah, let's start there. Yeah. So uh, a turnkey uh, arrive and drive program, you're all in cost, uh, like to run at Indy right. uh, with us, I think is going to come in right at two grand. With what? your entry, wow. really? Does that that's, come with chicken fingers and like drinks and stuff too? It, yeah. it comes with Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Pretty close. yeah, yeah. So we actually do cater for everybody. We supply the food. We supply the I product. Know. Everything. That's, that's it a almost great sounds. Deal. Maybe you should raise your prices. That sounds too cheap. <laughs> My wife would agree with you. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, "What are you no, doing? You, know? you need to make some more money." I mean, okay. So the so what kind of if I if I sign up today, what kind of cart do I get in? What's the deal? It's the Ignite K3. Okay. So it's a product that we develop specifically for these applications. And it's a, uh, you're familiar with crate motors and crate Absolutely. motor racing yeah. classes and spec racing. And, and this is just spec racing right. um, at the karting level. So the engine is sealed at the Briggs and Stratton uh, racing operation. It's an animal, Milwaukee. is that what they call it? It's actually called an LO206. It's a 206 cc engine, okay. uh, over, uh, overhead valve uh, motor, okay. and they're all sealed at the factory and they're unbelievably close. They're really competitive right, right. out of the box. And um, we take that one step further. We specify the chassis, we specify the tires. Everybody's on a little bit lower grip tire, so the cart moves around a little bit more. You gotta drive it. It's right. not super hooked up. Huh. Um, it doesn't pound your ribs like when you run the super, super soft tires with a lot of grip. Right, oh yeah, that, that'll beat you up pretty, yeah. yeah. When okay. you're uh, at a more advanced age, yeah, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> the softer tires are really tough on your ribs. Yeah, I didn't think about that. There's nothing to absorb anything. So yeah, there's no suspension. Could, That's will what it, makes will it, those hop a little bit in the turns and just they will. Beat the, they will. So mm. with the harder tires, that goes away. Yeah. Um, so it's a pretty cool deal. So. Yeah, you've got, and that's three. Day, that's a three day deal at Indy. Right. That doesn't really? include. Yeah, that's three days of track so you should time. Break, I mean, breaking it down per day. I, it's I feel pretty like pretty damn cheap. Yeah, it's, your wife's right. <laughs> she always is. A little more. She always is. You learn, you, you learn well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I may not be the smartest guy around, but I'm smart enough to know that she's always right. Always, always right. Always. It's not worth being. It's not worth having her be wrong. No. So. All right, so that so you show up to the track and then you do like a practice kind of test and tune deal. So you show up at the track on Thursday. You yeah. kind of get acclimated, get checked in. Right. Our staff checks you in. You you meet your mechanic. You right. meet all of the uh, uh, support people, and then Friday morning there's a drivers meeting for all of the participants. And there's going to be about 500 drivers at this event this year. Wow. And and we're going to have in our ignite classes there. We're going to have over a hundred and probably 130 entries across three classes. Wow. And so then we'll have our own driver's meeting. Right. And then practice starts on Friday. Uh, you'll have some practice uh, with qualifying at the end of the day. And then on uh, Saturday, you have some heat races. And then the final event is on Sunday. So it's a ton of track time. So that's a lot of driving. It's I a mean, lot of People those. are tired. That's why you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. People are tired and then they drink beer at night. Yeah. I mean, what more do you want? Nothing. Sounds Maybe. like perfect deal I, yeah i don't know is there a hot tub there i could sit in it we, we could probably that. arrange yeah. that yeah, yeah next year i don't know just that's i'm just throwing my suggestions in without having done it but before. it's so cool because you're at indy and then you know we encourage people to stay downtown because right. downtown indy is so cool it and, is and they're it's the same thing there. uh yeah. you know we're going to be in miami homestead in january and february mm -hmm. good time so, to go there yeah i mean again <laughs> we're finally learning some things here yeah. you know uh, over time but uh, like, let's see, get out of the Midwest in January and February. Perfect. Yep, check. Yeah. So we're going to race at the kart track down at uh, Homestead uh, with Super Karts USA, SCUZA. They've got a, will, a real well-proven program. Huh. And uh, our Ignite class is going to be uh, running down there. Same deal. So you can fly in, race with us. It's about two grand for the weekend. Right. And uh, same deal. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days of on-track activity. Uh, one weekend, we're going to stay down in Key Largo. Uh, the other weekend that we're competing, we're going to stay up in uh, Coconut Grove and, and the area around South Beach. Wow. So good times, man. Come join Lots us. Lots of trouble. Yeah, good oh, yeah we need to maybe yeah. make that a, a life. Like, I, I can do it. <laughs> I, I could do that. I can. We can make that happen. We can make it happen. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Interesting. So how do you haul all these carts that you have a huge couple couple semis or what's the deal uh, that's a good question for miami so what are you doing with your rigs um, right uh, that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You right yeah so uh we do have a couple of rigs of our own uh we have one uh big rig and a couple smaller ones and uh and and then we just 
branch out and rent. Yeah. We scale again. Yeah. We scale. scale it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a that's a that's to be a able to do that. To do yeah. yeah. Could, we'll do events uh, like at Indy. Indy's our biggest event where we're going to work with well over a hundred drivers this year or next year in 2020. And uh, we'll do smaller events as well. We're going to go to Quincy, Illinois. We race at this Ooh. track. It's, and the st- is that a street that. track? It's a yeah. it's through a city park. I want to do yeah. that. Can anybody do that? Anybody can do that. But does anybody you. want to do it? I think we need to maybe draw the line right here. And <laughs> it's say, like the no. Anybody I, but it Noah. looks terrifying. It's amazing. Yeah, and and I'll have to get you some of the video. The video is incredible. Maybe that's the one we should They've do. They've been doing that for a long time, right? This is the fiftieth year. Yeah, I thought so. This will be the fiftieth. So anniversary. do you have? A, is there an ignite class? There is. There's multiple ignite classes up there, so you can arrive and drive with us yeah. at South Park in Quincy, Illinois. So the track is 1.1 miles long, roughly, and we've got over 60 feet of elevation change. So. Jeez. It's it's really it's almost like Monaco, but for carts, you know. And right. the whole town turns out. We have a massive crowd there on Saturday and Sunday. Oh, um, it is just it's super cool. The park's beautiful. The Quincy Parks Department does a great job, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a big one, but not as big as Indy. So we'll right. scale it down a little bit, and we'll have about thirty to forty drivers up there. When or, is that? Or that was pretty easy. When is that drivers. one? That's going to be the second weekend in June. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's the one that we show up to. to I, if I if something goes wrong, I want to be able to go through the front window of a bakery or something like that. <laughs> that's is, that's, is that's that always a little more spectacular. Yeah. Well, actually, not here because we're in a city park. But you could oh, end park. up in a okay. creek. A creek. Creeks are always up, kind of fun. There's a lot of water. Literally, literally up shit creek. Yeah, yeah, and I've yeah, seen that who, happen. Who pays for the go kart? Yeah, what situation? if it goes wrong? Yeah, what if, if it, it goes horribly wrong, yeah, you're sort of on the hook for that. Right. That's fair enough. That's yeah. But it's a we can rebuild it here. Brand new turnkey complete cart forty five hundred dollars. Right. So again, pretty reasonable. Right. So it might be a sixty five hundred dollar weekend. <laughs> when you're all done, <laughs> and, and uh, the, a few people have sort of run up uh, larger bar tabs in Quincy. Right. So, so maybe you that might could be the factor of that yeah. in too. It's the bar. Quincy's only an hour and a half. Is it an hour away? About two hours, two and a half hours. hours. Yeah. The bar tab up there will always get you. That's really? the one you got to watch out for. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is about Quincy, but where do you stay in Quincy? Uh, there's actually a lot of great places right yeah. on the river, and it's man, the setting is so cool. This park is just amazing. It it, it picture like racing through Forest Park. Right. I mean, I thought that would be. A, I wish they'd do a race series there. Do you think you could get one going? We're working really hard on a kart race over there. I don't know if it, it there's might a lot happen. of that. There's some real serious. Ele- I mean, if you took the. Uh, you could go the hill up past the top of the uh, art museum. Yes. And then down. I mean, that would be pretty incredible. Maybe if, they wouldn't let you do that. If anything would ever happen over there, it would be in the, probably around the upper Muni parking lots. Yeah. Right. But that would still be spectacular. I think so. Yeah. There's a good back section around by the by the zoo. Yeah, that's just what we need to do is be racing by, behind the, yeah. the yeah. animals. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to get that far. But if we if we could pull something off behind uh, the Muni up there, I think that, we that would be, be thrilled a win. with that. Oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah, street racing. So that's one of the things we do too, street racing, where we roll into these towns. They shut down the city streets. Man, um, awesome. So how many other street races are there besides? So the biggest one is Quincy. Yeah. Last year they had right at, uh, oh gosh, I think they had 315 entries. And it's a uh, big race for in the Midwest, isn't it? It's a big race. Yeah. It's a big race. And uh, there's another great one up in Rock Island, Illinois. Rock Island. Okay. I've see see, I'm paying attention. You are paying attention. I'm, I, I'm interested in the street circuits. I think that's that's where my because I've seen the is the Rock Island one through a park as well, or is that it, it, no, it's through downtown Rock Island. Okay, proper. that's the one we want to do. Yeah, and that's where you can crash through the yes. front of a bakery if you'd really like it. Because if I'm gonna go it's going to be into a pile of croissants. Looking like a glazed donut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come looking at. Yeah, I look like a glazed donut, but yeah, a happy yeah. one. Go after the pastries. Why not? I mean, I'm usually hungry, so. <laughs> so let's talk about the class. How many different classes are there? You know, say it. Are they still racing two strokes? Boy, that is a. That's a great question. Because those things are depends on what state you're in, right? Well, or, it's it's an it's really it's an interesting time right now. Yeah, uh, and I'm, I'm a two I'm an old two cycle guy. We yeah. used to build our own engines. We used to oh, build really? our engines from the ground up at Margate. We built a hundred cc reed valve two stroke engine. Right. Um, uh, several years ago, that we had a lot of success with. Oh, just several years ago? Well, several decades ago now. This Dec- was back okay. in the late seventies, early eighties. Okay. Really a cool project. Yeah. And. Um, Two cycle carding these days has really fallen off. I'm a two cycle fan. I love two cycles, but the market has sort of spoken. What? And that's they want it goes back to time. 
we started talking about time and people having the ability to tinker on things in their garage. Well, when, in the in the two stroke heyday, people had time. They would spend their weeks out in the garage at night rebuilding their own engines right, and things yeah. like that. That doesn't happen anymore. People don't have that time. So they want something that they can bolt onto the cart, go race. It's super reliable. They don't have to touch it. They don't have to work on it. They can just drive it. And yeah. that's a four cycle Briggs engine. Right. So the market has definitely shifted. And and I hate to say it, but the fall off that we've seen in the two cycle racing uh, over the last couple of years has been dramatic. Really? But at the very tip of the pyramid, so karting is like a pyramid. At the very tip of it, there's some people that do it very well. Right now, Scusa, who just had their big race out in Las Vegas in a parking lot. Out oh, yeah. We, um, we we see every that. time we're, the, yeah. I always see that yeah. track. When you're out there for yeah. SEMA. We're like, what are they doing over there? And I looked yeah. it up before. Yeah. yeah, so they put on a great race out there. Uh, they had over 500 entries at that event. Right. And that's all very high end two cycle racing. Right. Uh, and probably, I'd say 60% of the drivers are from outside the United States. Okay. So they put on a first class event out there, and that's the group we're going to be racing with down in Florida. Okay. So we're super excited about that. But you get beyond the tip of the pyramid up there, mm -hmm. and it quickly becomes dominated by four-cycle racing because sure. it's more accessible, more affordable, and, and more, I think a little, a little bit more, more reliable. Relatable. Yeah, Reliable yeah. and relatable because yeah. people can relate to camshafts and right. carburetors or fuel injection anyway. But it, Is anybody racing shifter carts in, in the U.S., or is it just kind of, or is it few and far between? It's few oh, and far between, and Scusa is the king of the hill when okay. it comes to shifter carts. So the best shifter cart racing you're going to see all year yeah. happens in Vegas at the Scusa Super Nationals. So uh, the shifter cart thing in the Midwest, there's pockets of it. You right. know, and there's some guys that are really good at it over in the Indy area. Um, but it's just, it's so expensive. Yeah. And... It, it helps if you're about 16 or 17 years old and sure. a real animal because those things are so physical to drive. Oh, they, they I mean, they're nuts. Brut you know, the power band on those things is like that, right? Yeah. yeah. And so you've got a six-speed transmission and a power band like that, and you're just – and a lot of grip. And it's very physical. They're, I mean, they, they're what you describe them as being violent. They're violent. <laughs> yeah. What's the top speed? Uh, it depends on the track, but just for reference, uh, Gateway Cartplex here uh, – right across the river from us, 15 minutes from here. Uh, top speed over there is gonna be probably 90 miles an hour on the on the sprint track. So they get what? there, yeah, on, yeah. The, really? on a short track, yeah, they that's get there crazy. in a hurry. Oh gosh, yeah. Ooh. That's a little scary. That straight's not that long. And you'll see, you'll see spikes of over three Gs of cornering loads. Wow. I mean, it's just insane. So that's 90 miles an hour on a straight that's like two, 300 yards, 300 yards long? Uh, maybe. Maybe, yeah. I mean, you can. We're getting close to a thousand feet long over there, but not quite. It's okay. more like seven hundred feet. Yeah. So it gets there in a hurry. It's really huh. cool stuff. Um, but that's not where you start. You right. Know, the analogy that I always use is like, "Hey, I want to learn how to fly planes." Hmm. You don't start in an F eighteen. No. No. <laughs> you know? right. And that's what a shifter cart's like. Yeah. Uh, so cut your teeth down here where you can learn how to drive on right. a slower four cycle powered cart. If you want to go faster, we've got options. You know. So we we with you guys you know a couple of years ago <laughs> yeah yeah after after doing i love you know i love go-karts so I've, I've driven all sorts of go-karts but they're the rental go-karts so and that's um, probably where you should stay you know based on what i've seen on the yeah. track yeah I mean, thanks uh, <laughs> charles on the other I, hand uh, charles, charles. <laughs> so we I got so, a little more weight yeah I, I need something with a little more power and i'm just looking for okay there's the offshoot of uh, is, it, there it is. is it still around? Well, this is, so the cart we built with you right. was sort of obviously pre-production and kind of a one-off, and it yeah. was totally crazy. It you, was totally crazy. You said to me, hey, I'm going to do something totally crazy. Yeah. And I said, I'm your guy. Yes. I can help with yeah. that. And so we came up with 275cc uh, reed valve engines from Yami, a company in Italy. We right. like the name. Yami. Yami. Water-cooled. Water-cooled. And... Each one of those things makes about 43 horsepower. So we had 86 horsepower on this cart. And the cart with you in it weighed probably 380 pounds. Right. And talk about getting there fast. That thing was insane. <laughs> and the, the throttle pedal was like an on-off switch. It was wonderful. I mean, I, I, it was cool. I, I still like, if I think about it now, it just makes me happy because that thing was <laughs> that cool. But I also was like, at the time... Well, we were driving. It was about 100 degrees outside. Yeah. yeah. We've been filming the show for too long, living <laughs> off of like beer 
and like pizza. Like I wasn't in like the tip. I wasn't in real like tip top cardio shape. You're ready to race at Quincy though. Oh man, I'm ready to race at Quincy though <laughs> for sure. I, I've been working out, eating um, not not pizza every day, but yeah, I got into that thing and it was insane. Yeah, because yeah. when the, when it gets up on the power band, when it or as we say, when it comes up on the pipes, when it yeah. gets into the power band, there it goes. Oh man, you better have it pointed in the right direction. And the other amazing part about it was the brakes on it. It had yeah. disc brakes. Yes, all the way around, front and rear. Yeah. And it was when you got on the brakes. So I, what I, what would start happening is, well, once I figured out the acceleration, which was basically when I, when I'd hammer it and it would get on the pipe, pipes, um, I, I lift out of the seat a little bit. Yes, it would. I like so shoot you out the back of the. I seat. was kind of floating <laughs> under hard crazy. acceleration. It was that fast. Yes. And then the brakes were good enough where I'd start floating up the other way. <laughs> so like I started to get this feel. I was like, if if I'm going, you know, reasonably fast. I'm basically not sitting a whole lot unless I'm going around a turn um, because it was it was that fast. But I'd start uh, I was over braking. The, I'd brake way too early because yeah. I didn't yeah. expect the brakes to be that good. Yeah. yeah. So then I would over break the I'd over break the corner and then um, and then I started going deeper and deeper into the corner and then I started losing like all anyway. So I, I never quite found the balance because we get, we basically got kicked off the track because I was <laughs> terrible. Um, but that thing was amazing and I, we kept trying to get back together and drive it again and i think it's been since decommissioned well we've gone we've gone a different route with it yeah so we've put two of the uh briggs racing sealed crate motors the 206 right. motors we've built a new cart around those two engines and roughly the chassis that that you're familiar with sure and we just introduced that as the x2 okay uh, this past week and it's geared towards middle-aged guys guys that are a little bit bigger maybe right that uh a single engine cart just isn't as quick it doesn't have the performance that they'd sure. like and uh, this thing has just taken off for us. Oh yeah, it's, it's really cool. So we can get back out there. And we okay. can go run twins again. Right. But this thing's more manageable. I, this I, is something that you that's can two think four about. Two four strokes on there. Yeah. Two four okay. strokes. Twin engines. Yeah. yeah. On on that cart, I could only drive. I don't know. It was the equivalent of like riding a dirt bike really hard around a track when yeah. you're like a half ass dirt. You know, it's like you go through a couple like rhythm sections, you hit the whoops, you know, whatever, maybe like go flying over the tabletop. Like you do that a couple of times and you're done. You're done. And then you're yeah. wondering like how the guy, how the super cross right. guys yeah. can do it on yeah. much bigger stuff yeah. over and over and over. Yeah. That was the experience I had. Cause I could do four or five laps. And then I got a shot. Yeah. You know, you're just hanging on just, trying to save your life. Yeah. Not going You're fat. only doing 20 miles an hour. It's like <laughs> <laughs> Charles, on the other hand, we did get it on the track. <laughs> So we got on the big track with it. Yeah. yeah. And I was, it, the best thing about that is, I, I, I mean, like I said, I really good experience with that thing. But the best thing about that is like I could, you could drive it flat out yeah. Yeah. all the way around the track yeah. around every turn, yeah. just flying, yeah. doing about, I think it was, it would do like 89, 90 miles. Well, we were miles. geared for the small track. Right. So it would get to like 86 miles an hour yeah. really fast. Re really fast. But then we're on the rev limiters. And then so if we were going to run the big track, right. we'd change the gearing and that thing would run 125, 130. Ooh. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't know if I could drive that flat out, but it was good. Yeah, that was so. This is a little more tame version of that, and it's perfect for for guys like us. Yeah. Honestly, oh yeah, just want to go out and because you it's it's super quick, but you can kind of think about what you're doing. You're not right. trying to save your life in every corner. I was trying to save my life in in every, but <laughs> uh, and then rear brake, the trail like a they don't have front brakes on the new X2 with the Briggs engines. We don't have front brakes. Right, you just don't need them. You know, I'm you, introducing concepts that to stuff you're not actually doing. Cause, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you can over brake the cart actually. Yeah. You can, oh yeah. You can slow it down so much. Right. Uh, so front brakes are really only used on the shifter carts. Right. It's the only place they run anymore. So, but yeah, it's a really cool package. Sweet. Uh, we just introduced that last week and um, already sold out our first run. Nice. Starting on the second run, and uh, we're gonna have it on display over at PRI next week. So how many yeah, privateer yeah, yeah. guys do you have running it outside of the, uh, do you have a lot, I assume you have a lot of people that, you know, privateer guys outside of the arrive and drive. We do. Um, I'm not sure why you would ever do that. You could just <laughs> show up and eat uh, Chick-fil-A and right. drink sweet tea. Well, a lot of guys probably have their kids racing. Right. They do. Right? Yeah, yeah. so uh, let's just take Gateway Cartplex, for example, over at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Um, again, right across the river here in St. Louis. Uh, the facility has been fantastic. We've been open five years over there. And most of the participants there on any given weekend, we'll have our Ignite series uh, events over there. And it's just five classes, all for spec carts. Right. And uh, the one we had to finish off this past season, we had right at 90 entries. Really? And in almost all cases there, um, all but just a few, the drivers, the racers, or the parents own the carts. Okay. 
So that's that's really more of a. That's you don't do an arrive and drive there, do you? We do. You I well? mean, if you wanted to come over and run, and, and we had probably four or five of them that day. Okay. Um, and something like that is like $400 for the day. What? Oh, wow. All right. We know so what we'll we're, start there. I know we'll what I'm there. spending my kids' Christmas yeah. money on. Yeah, let's, let's do that before we go to the park at Quincy. <laughs> that would be a good idea to run a couple events over at Gateway. Yeah, I don't know. I just think that's season. the coolest thing because otherwise you – I mean – Well, you, what age do they get? What Like if you're going to get a kid involved, what age – so this is, people are crazy, especially parents. Um, I've had parents come to me and go, well, they turn three and a half next month. Is that too young? And I'm like, look. We got <laughs> Have a I lot told you about our new here. twin engine right. cart? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a cart for you. Yeah. Um, the whole family can ride in it. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, three and a half is a little bit young. Technically, the class for kids starts at five years old, five to eight years old. Wow. That's the kid cart class. And we build a cart specifically for five to eight year olds. It's got a little Honda 50 CC four stroke on it. Yeah. Super easy package. Uh, and the emphasis is on learning how to drive. And it looks like a professional go-kart. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all there. It's just yeah. shrunken down a little it's, bit. It's really yeah. a cool piece. That thing is cool. And uh, so that's where you get started. And those things run like 30 miles an hour, which is plenty quick, you know. For a three and a half year old. Yeah. I'd say that it is. Yeah, we, we draw the line at the three. Anything under five, yeah, they've got plenty of time. No need to get them in a cart that, that soon. Right. So, um, so five to eight years old, eight to 12 years old is the next class, mm -hmm. uh, 12 to 15, and then basically 15 and up. Uh, then we also have a master's class for 35 and up over there. Also called fatties. We do have a fatty class. You need one, right? Oh, yeah. Not you. God, sorry. See, That's why you do uh, it's always, <laughs> twin engine cart's got a wider yeah. seat. <laughs> well, it, we, it does. It's, yeah. it's geared towards bigger drivers, yeah. but we also have a heavy class. Right. So typically in the heavy class, the drivers are going to be over 210, 220. Okay. And so there's a minimum weight in the class. Yeah. So the okay. heavier drivers aren't at a disadvantage. Because you really are. Because you don't want you, you yeah. don't want you two guys racing against each other in the same class. No. Yeah. So, uh, you don't, cause I just, you know, even with like, even with sandbags covering me, I'd still even, win by a lot. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. It never stops. Does <laughs> it? it doesn't stop. It never no. stops. We haven't been on, we haven't been on a track no. together in a while. It's kind of like, that's why I think maybe we'll show up for the, the, uh, the arrive and drive at gateway and, you know, get beat by some 12 year olds. Wait, we, we won't be in their class though. You won't be racing against the 12 year olds, God, but you'll be no. racing against 15 year olds maybe. So, uh, yeah, maybe a 15 year old but it's really cool to see the Sorry. progression of kids as they move up. Oh yeah. Through the different age categories. And, and it's, it's really, it always impresses me, especially with the five to eight year old, the kid carters, like they're five, right? They right. can't tie their shoes or talk for the right. most Race. part, but they're out there and they pick it up so fast. And, and they actually are better than most of the adults. When you get right down to it, they listen, they just, they figure it out. Yeah. They're like sponges. They pick, you know, they don't, they don't have bad hat, you know, and bad habits are video games. Like right. even their, their hand eye coordination is pretty good already. Yeah, and this is a great way to get kids off the couches. Yeah. Kids and adults, for that right. matter. Get off the couch, Let's go out, and, and one of the great things that you pick up while you're racing carts is a sense of spatial awareness. Oh, yeah. So you just develop sort of this sixth, sen sixth sense of, like, what's going on around you right. that really serves a young driver well when they get into a car. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you're just so much more alert and aware of what's going on around you. Um, you're a safer driver. I right. think the cool one of the coolest things of racing is when you have everybody on a field with that with that sense of awareness, and you do, and everything looks yeah. so fluid and yes. crazy. It's kind of like the highways in Saudi Arabia. Yes, really. like, because in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we just, just came we back just from Saudi say, Arabia, yeah. by the way. But yeah, yeah. it was it, it was uh, it was basically like that. They would know? draft. They would be like inches. We'd be going about ninety. They'd be inches off the bumper of somebody else. But the person in front would never like brake check you or anything like <laughs> no, that. It just thing. seemed to work. Yeah, yeah. It was terrifying, but yeah, it worked. Those guys they're that, like, five seen, wide on a three lane highway. That's I've seen those drive. crazy videos of like those guys like hanging out the side. We of didn't the see window. any. Yeah, they, they call it uh, sidewall skiing. We didn't yeah. see yes, that. Yes, right. It was that mean? No, but we wanted to find those guys. We wanted to be the guys that climbed out and took the wheels off the. Have you seen them? Yeah, right. What an. Who thinks of that? Right. That doesn't seem like that's a good thing. They can also drift front wheel drive cars like a Camry. They're really if, good. If you're looking for some some drivers, you know, I right. think yeah. you should just go over there. Well funded. Recruit, Fearless. Recruit. Well funded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's they, one of the key terms in motorsports, by the way. Well, well funded. funded. Yeah. It, it work. It helps out. Doesn't, it helps. I don't. It, yeah. It, it's it's the sad reality of it. You know, uh, that's just the way racing's gone over yeah. the years. Right. And, you know, we talk about going to Indy uh, and 
boy, I mean, everybody except maybe the top six or seven guys has to bring money. Right. Even if you've won the 500 in the past, even if you're a past series champion, you've got to bring money. So you better be more of a marketing specialist than a driver anymore if sure. you want to make it yeah. up, the, up the ladder. You know, it's crazy. So, but we're a great place to start. Yeah. Great place to cut your teeth. Virtually everybody in the Indy 500 field started in carts. Um, this year's IndyCar champion, Joseph Newgarden, mm -hmm. started with Margay Carts at Newcastle Motorsports Park over in Greenfield, or just outside of Greenfield, Indiana. Uh, Joseph drove our carts and won a lot of races in our carts, moved his way up the ladder with a lot of help from Mark Dismore over there at Comet Cart Sales. Right. And he hasn't won the 500 yet, but he's won the championship twice. Right. And he gets a paycheck from Mr. Pinsky. Which I'd say, well, thank you, Roger. He's doing well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll take that gig any right. day of the yeah, week. Yeah, not many people getting paid in racing. No, yeah, there's not at there's the top. Really it's good yeah. at the top, but it's, it's good at the top of pretty much everything. Pretty much yeah. everything. Yeah. And I think you're there. I mean, you guys are killing it here. Uh, you're doing nice work. You're traveling all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Try, and, we try to try to get out and meet meet people. You know, put ourselves out there. So it's good. Absolutely. It's no different than your business, really. I mean, you have to continuously like put yourself out there. Yeah, you have to, you, you know, get out, and market yourself, <laughs> talk to everybody, bring new products out. Yes. It's the same thing for us. You got to be there with new stuff and new ideas, and just just to meet people and shake hands because that's where you're gonna, you know, that's where new customers are gonna come from. It, it's really interesting that you mentioned that because uh, this X2 that we introduced last week, it's new stuff. I mean, yeah. you just said it's new product, new right. stuff, and there's. It's been done before. I mean, we used to race twins all the time right. back in the uh, way back in the day, which you have in your showroom yes. currently. Yeah, right. Yeah, some of the uh, we've got a 1968 dual engine new breed, right? I mean, which was crazy fast back then. But um, you know, we came out with this new cart, and there's not exactly a class or category for it to run in, but we feel there's a market for it, and we feel sure. like it's going to grow organically. And and the response you get on social media, you guys got to love social media, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, love and hate. It, love. It's a love-hate yeah. deal, but um, the response we've had on it has been really, really good. But there's, like, existing carters right. that have been in it for a long time, and they look at it and go, ah, you know, we can go faster in a shifter cart, or we can do this, or, you know, they, they start batting it down yeah. for one reason or another. Right. And then there's people outside the sport sure. that aren't in the sport right now. Oh, yeah. Their response is, I want it. Yeah, real. Oh, yeah. Right in. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Two engines. Yeah. Sign me up. Right yeah, there. it's got that cool factor. So we're trying to always look outside the box. You know, yeah. it's a cliche, but you're you're no. trying to always like find the next thing and keep it fresh. And right. Right. you got to have that new product and you got to be trying to bring new people in. And uh, we've got something hopefully we'll have out within the next year to, to kind of follow uh, the lines of this X2. And uh, again, bring some more new people in. We're always trying to grow the sport. It's a great sport. And uh, but you've got to put stuff out there. What um, about electric? <laughs> I was just gonna say, you know, you got to keep evolving. And, and do you have? Do you feel like you have to do something electric? I feel like you, I have to. Or are yeah. you doing something electric? Yes, but yeah. we're in the very early stages. So we had some meetings last week about that actually. And uh, and I mentioned I'm a two cycle guy, right? Mm -hmm. I love two cycle engines. I love building two cycle engines. I love the smell of like methanol and and blenzol. Yeah. You know, right. I mean, blenzol gold label and methanol. Like, right. That's the best thing ever. And um, like electric, you know, not so much, but it is where things are going, right? And yeah. by having something like that, I feel like you pick up a whole new round of people yeah. who like it because it's yes. just because it's electric. And one of the neat things that I think we're going to be able to introduce with electric is, is kids today, everybody today, not just kids. I don't want to throw all the kids under the bus, but... Yeah. But everybody, you walk Damn around kids. on your phone. Yeah, You're on your right. phone all the time. Everybody's right. looking at their phone all the time. And what we're going to be able to do with the electric is adjust the performance parameters right. yeah. on the phone. I so mean, instead of physically uh, changing the camshaft or changing gears or working on the clutch. Turn it down, turn you, it up. You're going to have a, a couple different sliders, and you're going right. to be able to change the performance characteristics of this motor. And um, I think there's some really cool potential there. Right. Uh, and the acceleration is like instant. Yeah. That was totally that, crazy. That experience alone, I think, will draw a lot of people in. Yeah. It really will. Yeah. And again, people don't want to work on things. So what do you have to do on this? You've got to recharge the batteries. Sure. You know, yeah. I mean, that's... That's about it. I think there's a lot of potential there, and there's a lot of STEM programs out there. Oh, yeah. That are well-funded. Uh-huh. 
and there's a lot of hop on one of those hop on one of those and i think we've got some great opportunities with some schools and different programs there but electric is coming and uh we need to embrace it and, and embrace it with a little more enthusiasm than i've had in the past so yeah I know, we're kind of well, like, it's, it's mm. working its way into all motorsports right now yeah I think about it i mean formula, formula e. e yeah formula e. they were running those over in saudi arabia i thought those were going to go away they're still around. <laughs> they tear them up pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, they, they go away every race weekend. Yeah. It's amazing how much they tear up at those events. Yeah. And that the whole concept there is pretty cool. It's not a – they don't market that as a race. They market it as an event. It's yeah. a big street party. There's concerts. There's right. stuff going on. And the race is just one more thing. I mean, that's kind of where we – yeah. Yeah. It's all about the younger generation. You know, yeah. that's what they're into. They don't right. want to go just watch a race. It's yeah, and they don't know the difference between a two-cycle and a four-cycle. No, right. it needs to be like you're going to go to t – there's 10 things going on at once. Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Just the fact that there's 10 things happening at once may be more exciting than the main event, whatever, right. whatever that is. Yeah. But that's kind of the future of car shows as we see it as well because, you know, right now, like car shows, a lot of these car shows that have been around forever that are still good car shows are bringing a lot of great cars. They're kind of boring, and – the uh, the, the demo of the car show is older and they're okay with it being boring, but it's, they're not, it's kind of like a shrinky market and there's still a lot of them around, but I so, think that the, the future is like, you got to have a lot of stuff going on. Stimulation all the time. You got to have that's, good food. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's stimulation all the time, right? There, there you go. Exactly, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's just one of the coolest vehicles I've ever seen. You guys just did an amazing job with that. But so how, what's, what's the electric version of that look like? I mean, how does that happen? How do you, well, do we need I, to drink a lot and just sit around and, and throw things at the wall and I, see what sticks? <laughs> now, it's kind of the future of unreliable, you know, you, you, now you can turn the most unreliable, some of the coolest looking vehicles out there ever made were terribly, like they were so unreliable, yeah. right? like the worst. DeLorean. And you can make, yeah. I mean, with electric, you, you, you simplify a lot of those systems. So I don't, it should be interesting, but we went to SEMA and at SEMA, General Motors had two crate engines. They were electric crate engines. Electric crate motors. Yeah. Mm -hmm, that they had they thrown out there. They kind of look like a V8 almost, the way yeah. they really? put together. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it's kind of like when uh, when, the, when the buggy, when the horse and buggy turned into a car, it's like you can't go too quick, and you kind of got to make it look like something it used to. Right. But, right. yeah, so they're still, they, they kind of make it look like a, a V8 engine. So is uh, that the next thing for you where you start taking those crate motors, those sort of V8-looking engines, and dropping them into customer people cars will be because all, they're more reliable? Uh, yeah. Because they're more, and I think there's just a whole new round of people mm. who just want to do something because it's electric. Wow. It's like, oh, it's my old, it's my old 911, but now it's electric. Right. Totally, I'll do and that. And it's not but all about it just, just get, being green anymore. Like that's where it started. Everybody's like, right. oh, you're saving the environment. Now everybody's like, okay, we get it. And then you can argue that point too. Is it really saving the environment? Now everybody's just all about like. It's just cool. It's, it's cool. It's the thing. I think it's, it's cool. Thing, yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, I, uh, that never even occurred to me until right now. But yeah, here's my old 911 that I had back in college. Retrofit stuff. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But they're gonna amazing. come out. They've got these power packs that they say they're gonna come out with, and it's. They had two different ones. I think one was like 450, and don't quote me on this because I'm probably wrong. But one was like 450, and one was 650 horsepower, or something along those lines, and it was a a motor, yeah. and drop in and so, go. Well, let's face it. I mean, the future of this of our hobby could end up making us have to use electric. Yeah. I mean, because the government could eventually say, "Oh, you know what? These cars are polluters. We don't want them around anymore." Well, and that's something. What are you going to do with them? That's a challenge we face with the two cycle engines all the time. When you import the two cycle engines, you yeah. have to be real clear that it's for off highway use. Right. You know? and, right. And that could go away someday. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. But the, the dirtiest running stuff is usually the best. The best stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. much. Yeah. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. So I I don't know. You know how many years does it take for people to forget about how cool something sounds and how yeah. like it's just a generation of two or two of people who never had it. Right. Yeah. To lose that. Yeah. And then the next it's on to the next thing, right? So yeah. there's going to be you know everybody um, everybody that was you know all the guys that loved their big blocks and two stroke yeah. engines they're going to be out of it. They're going to past you know people don't live forever Don garlitz himself has been he's racing a top fuel, well it's not a top fuel car top electric car top electric <laughs> but he, but top e yeah he's trying to do 200 i think it is and really yeah dragster and yeah. that's gonna happen he's done like 189 already i gotta and he's 189 and he's 189 he's, yeah is he 90 he's in his 90s yeah holy cow yeah. really yeah and he's playing with electric race cars. i mean that tells it's you something right cool. there yeah. As yeah. soon as somebody makes, as, as soon as there's a crate type platform for those electric engines, 
electric motors are going to be in it, it'll be like yeah they won't be able to make enough of them literally yeah. like flipping a switch yeah yeah there was an electric karting place there still is in st louis but um there was one that was out in um st earth city earth city yeah. grand prix speedways that was amazing yeah, it was a really nice. Was place. it not a me? It, <laughs> it was, was overbuilt. It was, and, it, and I was like addicted to it, and I would go out there every weekend because it it, it was the nicest one I'd ever anywhere. It was the nicest indoor yeah. place anybody had ever been to, but they didn't get a lot of traction, and it was geared towards like these big events. Yeah. Like we're gonna get all these corporate guys to come in, and we're gonna start. I hope you didn't lose any money on that venture. No, fortunately, I was on. No, I was uh, not involved in that. Okay, <laughs> um, but they they overbuilt it. So besides the track on the inside, the locker was, rooms looked like you were at Augusta. It was amazing. It was incredible. And they had all these yeah. rooms. Like, yeah, they, they had the right rooms, idea. Yeah. I don't know if people come to St. Louis for these big corporate things. These it, yeah. it would have worked. I was like Vegas, Orlando, whatever. Like, sure. Well, they have conferences. And, yeah. Yeah. It would have been a home run there. But the track was, there was two tracks and on the weekend. They make it a half, it was a half mile indoors yeah. and it was with real a, asphalt and it was asphalt. Yeah. Because you, the indoor, that's my, that's always my thing with the indoor it's places. Polished concrete. It's polished yeah. concrete. Yeah. Like there's no grip. They just go, whoosh. which is part of the fun. Everybody feels like they're going faster yeah. on that polished concrete. But on that asphalt, the carts were hooked up. It, it was fun. And if they would have gotten the restaurant done, yeah. that overlooked, that was going to overlook the track. Yeah. I think it would have been had something going. Yeah. It wasn't, ex, you know, it was normal, I don't know, 20 bucks for. Yeah, it was, it was a little overdone. It was super nice. They did it an was, amazing job, but. And boy. now it's, and now it's uh, a church. church. Yeah. Joyce Myers. And before that it was a country dance. I mean, so at least, you know what? In cahoots. In cahoots. It's claim to fame though. It was the very first ever Sam's club. It was. It was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Before in cahoots, before yeah. the in cahoots days. I remember Gosh, that. Who remembers the in cahoots days? I think the high. That's I think troubling. I think the high point was the the carding place, which is yeah. incredible. Yeah, it was really cool. They did a nice job. I mean, then, the front lobby was larger than most indoor carding places. I think the gift store, the gift store alongside the front lobby, they had a, a full on full retail. I mean, it was first class. It was really the nice. cart. Well, they were Italian. I don't know what Italian company made those. I but. don't even recall who made those carts. Uh, but Mike Johnson still has his place over on Watson. Yeah, great yeah. indoor place there yeah. uh, this winter. Great place to go and get your racing fix throughout the winter. Uh, I think it's called Victory Karting now. Yeah, uh, he's been there probably gosh, uh, eight nine years now. And then Gateway Kart Plex. We love the Gateway Kart Plex. Yeah, that's our favorite. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Outdoor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm still. Outdoors, I, yeah, I don't like I don't to know. go indoors too much. Charles yeah. one time drove a. Um, oh, you gotta tell mind. the story. Go ahead, tell it. It's good. I like it. Well, so it over at for you. yeah, over at Boschertown, first place I ever raced. Boschertown right. oh, no, Speedway the up story in St. Charles. Charles. <laughs> oh no, I don't know what. I don't. Let's tell the Louisville story. Oh, there's a go- there's a lot of stories. I don't know which. I don't know which go. We yeah, we've had a lot of go. Those, well, uh, the the one the where he, he drove the go kart down the highway was I was. I, I don't even want to know about that. That one, one was not good. <laughs> That's like, Those usually don't end well. That's like the <laughs> that's like your worst nightmare. Someone driving a go kart on the street. I, it is for a lot of reasons. First of all, you can really get hurt. Right. And second of all, it's bad for the industry. It's bad for our sport because right. you can get hurt and killed. And I had a, and I don't mind telling people this. I had a father that came in one time, and he was so excited that his daughter was driving this go kart, and he had to show me this video, and. Uh, he shows me the video on his phone of his daughter, very young daughter, probably 10 or 11 years old, driving a go-kart on a city street around parked cars while there's traffic around. Really? And I about lost my mind. Yeah, that's I'm pretty like, dangerous. What are you thinking? I mean, <laughs> that just isn't going to end well. No. Um, and it's something that, you know, hey, if, you wanna ra- if you've got a go-kart and mm-hmm. you want to drive it, Go to Gateway Cartplex. Sure. Take it to Gateway Cartplex. Right. Keith Scharf, the general manager over there, will put you on the track. It's a safe facility. Yeah. You're not going to get hurt. No. You can go out and have a big time on a proper racetrack. Right. But but I am sort of interested in hearing about the Louisville story or whatever. Louisville has the longest. They say, but I think they're. It's, I think it's. I think it's pretty accurate. The yeah. longest cart track in the. They said. I, I believe they say world. Track. It's a two mile track. Wow. Two mile outdoor track. Um, Kind of fat. I mean, the like cart one lap. I think. I think it's one lap. <laughs> yeah. The carts are like, and, and you know, back in the day, you'd go to some some of these rental places, and most of them you're like, eh. but every once in a while, there, there's like a magical one you'd find where their stuff was actually pretty, pretty fast, pretty, pretty decent. Yeah. 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 And this is one of those places still. So 
the way faster than the chassis and the tires, um, which which is which is good. But they'll let you run out there in the rain, like no matter no matter what. So we were out there driving. It was pouring rain. People are flying off the track, going through the mud. They yell at you. If you guys do that again, we're kicking you off the track. All right, buddy. Okay. <laughs> but then you're still letting me drive. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I spun out on you know on like a straight. It was you know I, it was like a straight, but I spun out on a straight or going into a corner. Anyway, I had come to like a dead stop, and Charles T-boned me at full speed, and like I, it was he not a, like a workman's comp claim. I, I was, was bruised. I was bruised side. from the bottom of my ankle all the way, all the way stop. up to like my floating rib, like where where the car just yeah. He couldn't stop from you know. Laughing or he while didn't it, want to hit stop. me at full speed. So I mean, you know, maybe he just saw you there and just sort of took aim. There was aim. water. It was raining in my eyes. I couldn't stop. So you know, no, it was there. It, it was, was sketchy. They candy. sell like little glasses and everything. Like the yeah. track's real dirty. And uh, I don't we know. We knew it was going to be a good time when we walked up and people were carrying in their own helmets. They had their own helmets. <laughs> they had their own <laughs> like helmets. These guys like, are serious. This yeah. is awesome. Right. We didn't have helmets. No. There's, a, there's, what, there's a track down in Talladega yeah. that we got. Uh, that we had some issues at many, many years ago. <laughs> Ricky and, Bobby was there. Yeah, this was pre-Ricky Bobby days by a long shot. And they had a, uh, they would slow you down. If you were out there, you know, banging around too much, they would slow you down by just hosing the track down in the fastest corner. Oh, yeah. And not tell you. So you'd come flying in this corner and there's a guy standing there with a garden hose watering the track down. So you just slide straight into the barriers. That made it pretty interesting. That's the only time. Stay down with the hose. Whoa. That's the only <laughs> time we ever got escorted out of a carding facility by a state trooper. So that was that was sort of a highlight moment, really. It was pretty cool. Well, I wonder who came up with that. I don't know. <laughs> so get, don't make me get the hose. Yeah, they did it, they it, was, did it first. It was effective, though. Wow. It was effective. Maybe they'll do that over at uh, Gateway next year. That would be a. Make I want to be the guy there with the hose. With the hose, yeah. <laughs> Not getting. You, you can video it. Yeah. What do you think? All right. Have we run through it all? We could probably keep talking for an hour. We've got a lot of stories, but yeah, I think we've... we've <laughs> go to ignitecarding.com. Ignite okay. right, that's where yeah. we're going to go. Ignitecarding.com. If you want to do the Arrive and Drive programs, right. that shows all of our events there. Um, it's a really great website our team put together. You guys have an amazing digital team here, and, and I think we've got uh, a great team at our place as well, and uh, the new Ignite Carding website is really, they hit it out of the park. And so your cool. website is? Margay.com. Margay.com. So, cool. uh, yeah, we love racing go-karts. We'd lo love to have more people racing go-karts with us. Ages 5 to 75, come race with us. Gateway Cartplex right across the river here in St. Louis or anywhere in the country. We race all over yeah. the country. So if there's a go-kart track in your backyard or nearby. So, so we're going to do arrive track. and drive at, at Gateway. Yep. And then we'll after after we become professionals after that one experience after that one day on the track <laughs> yeah. you're ready after we're after we're heroes in our own minds we're gonna we're, we're gonna go to do Miami Ro Miami, Miami or Rock Isle I kind of want to do the street Quincy. Quincy 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 South Park but yeah you probably need to get some laps before you show up at Quincy but we can do Rock Island Labor Day weekend in Rock Island it's a big one my wife will love it if I'm out of town for Labor Day going. weekend yeah. racing carts or you could take no. her to Rock Island she might love that too. And take you to Rock Island. She won't like if I say they don't do it. arrive and, and <laughs> drives for kids, do they? Uh, typically not. There's a typically couple of not. places uh, at Indy, for instance. We have a junior class for so we do offer arrive and drive programs for the 12 to 15 year olds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we do not run the juniors at Quincy uh, because because it's just you know there, you can you can have an adventurous day at Quincy if you're not on your toes. Yeah. So, um, but Indy is a great place because Indy's a really cool place to run actually if you don't have a ton of experience because there's right. a lot of runoff. A lot of runoff. Right? Yeah. So you're, you're not real apt to hit something, you know, if you do uh, yeah. get it wrong. Right. So, hmm. But um, we'd love to have you guys show up I and run an event insurance. with us. Yeah. All right. Uh, and life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I have life insurance. Come to Gateway Cartplex in the spring. We're going to open on uh, probably March 15th. Yeah. As soon as the weather changes up over there. Got a great full schedule over there. Um, we're going to be pushing – 80 to 90 entries a weekend on average, I think, over there. Um, and the racing's really great, and we get you out of there early. So it's not like you have to get there at 7 in the morning right. and you leave at 7 at night, you know? Uh, because, again, people don't have time. They got other stuff to do. No time and no attention span. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like us. So we got to exactly. go do other stuff now, probably. Yeah, I already <laughs> <laughs> got to pay, att pay attention, Noah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Uh, that is Making Speed, again, here with Keith Margay Carts. It's at Margay Carts. Margay Racing. Margay Racing. Close. You got it close. Margay Racing. Margay Racing.com. Margay.com. 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 
Or IgniteCarding.com. IgniteCarding.com. That's where we're going to be going right now. All right. See ya. Thanks, guys. Thank Thank you. Thank you.